so first of all, I would like uh, to thank Fuelbox for this uh, great opportunity and this great uh, collaboration that we are having today with the Supreme Council for Family Affairs uh, Health Promotion Department, one of Her Highness Sheikha Jawahar bin Mohammed Al Qasimi uh, departments that are looking for the health and we're raising awareness among the community. Today's session is very special and unique as we are having uh, not usual uh, education on health and uh, lifestyle behaviors. It's more an interactive session that we are going to have with the fuel box. Ms. Victoria Stenso, Berta Road, uh, Dr. Mansour uh, Anwar, uh, we are very glad to have you today and uh, let me uh, give the chance for you to start ahead. Thank you so much. So my name is Victoria and first of all, I really would like to say that we've been looking so much forward to this session with you guys today. So today's topic is how to foster curiosity and build strong relationship between kids and parents. And I see that there's a lot of kids and parents here with us today. So you're so welcome. The times we are living in right now are quite extraordinary. And I guess we all feel challenged by the ways that we need to live our lives due to COVID-19. In some countries like Norway, where we come from, and I guess also in the UAE, schools and some kindergartens need to close. And some parents, like myself, we need to work from our home office. That is a new way of living for many of us, including myself. And also what we really want to focus on building and strengthening our relationship between kids, between parents and kids, and in other relationships that we are in. We have one hour together today. Uh, and we really want to make the most out of this hour. First, Dr. Mansour, he will talk for 15, 20 minutes. And then Bertha Lenderud, who is the CEO and founder of Fuelbox, will have 20 minutes with us on the topic of curiosity and how curiosity can be the new superpower. And um, both with you, kids and youth and also among parents and kids. Uh, we will also try out the tool in a digital way uh, and give you some inspiration, hopefully that you guys can use among uh, you as uh, you, uh, kids, uh, but also in relationship between parents and kids. So hopefully you will be inspired by this session today. So Dr. Mansour, it's an honor to have you with us today, and I really want to give the word to you now. Thank you so much, Victoria. Salam alaikum, everyone. Good evening, everyone who joined us today. I know I can see in front of me parents, children, different parts of the society, so I'll try to make it as much fun as possible. Let me start by telling you, I'm a father, but I'm also a son, and I'm also a brother. How come I'm all of that? Try to guess. Of course, I'm a son because I have parents. I'm a father because I have my kids. And also, I'm a brother because I have a brother and a sister. And I'm also a husband. And I'm also uh, so many different, different things. And each one of you wears, becomes different things on different days. Now, today, we're going to talk about a few things related to how we can have fun, how can we enjoy COVID rather than being afraid of it, and how to be curious about it. Can I tell you a small story about curiosity? The other day I was sitting on my couch and my son who's 12 years old comes to me and he tells me, Baba, why the earth is round? And I said to him, who said earth is round? Earth is not round, it's flat. And he said to me, no, earth is round, it's not flat. I said, no, it's flat, I cannot see it round. He said, go to the moon and you will see it round. So, we kept on fighting with the answer until he opened for me the map and he showed me the earth and I said, yes, you are right. I think it's around, but I would like to see it as a triangle. How about that? Then he said, ah, come on. It cannot happen a triangle. Why? So the more you're curious, 
the more questions you're gonna ask, the more you'll be able to know and answer certain things in life. And that's the best thing about being a kid is to keep asking. And that's why we adults should learn from you guys because we tend to forget to ask questions and we always think of certain things in a certain way rather than keep on asking and asking and asking. And that's the best thing. Keep nagging your daddy and mommy with questions as much as you can. And until you are not satisfied and you don't feel fulfilled with the answer, do not do that. And as a parent, allow your child to open up as much as possible. Let them ask. This is the beauty of that age because many innovations and inventions comes from a simple question. Now, all of us are at home at the moment. I'm watching you through a camera. You are watching me through a camera. Isn't that weird? It's a bit weird. Usually we will sit in a classroom or in a big hall and we will talk, we will have fun, we will enjoy and we will take back and forth. And I'm sure today I have parents and I have teachers because even today our parents are teachers. They are teaching their kids at home. They are wearing multiple hats. So it's suddenly we were pushed into an ocean of many things, trying to do many things at the same time. And this leads to fear, anxiety, stress. And then you start asking yourself, am I able to do that? How can I succeed in my life? I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm not able to teach my kid well. I put them in the school to, so they can learn, but now part of the teaching, I'm doing it. Am I doing the right thing? Will I be the reason for them not learning correctly? You, as a son or a daughter, you might say, my daddy and mommy are not teachers, but they don't know how to explain to me. My teacher knows how to explain to me in the class. How would you overcome all of this? So it was, it's a new challenge for all of us as parents, as kids, to find out how can we be positive? How can we continue to be curious? I'm sure many days comes to you where you will feel bored. Enough of staying at home. Enough of this virtual life. I want to go out. I want to enjoy my life. And alhamdulillah, in United Arab Emirates, the country is back to normal and we are doing a lot of things. We are able to go out. But at the end of the day, as families, we are still would like to find out how can we use this opportunity together. I'll tell you very quick things about what COVID taught us about curiosity. And then I'll give you a little exercise to do, which you can take it with you by drawing it in a big poster banner. And you can do that exercise on a daily basis. Few of the things which we came to know more about during this period. Number one, guess what? Health. I'm sure all of you started to realize more about how to be more healthy, whether by doing an exercise, by doing a yoga, by eating healthy, by sleeping properly. So when it comes to health and well-being, suddenly all of us as parents, as students, as children, we realize it's important. We need to really focus. And you know why? Because when you are healthy, your immune system releases the right substances and the hormones that will fight the coronavirus and any other virus. And that will make you always strong to be able to combat this. So health. Now you might ask me, doctor, what do you mean by being healthy? I don't go to the gym. I don't have a big yard outside my house. What shall I do? Jump on your mom's tummy. Jump on your father's head. Have fun with them. Play around with them in the room. This way you are running around. You are burning calories. Try to... Help your parents in the kitchen, cut the carrot, cut the cucumber, don't cut your hand, be careful. So you are burning energy, you are doing something. So the moment you are involving your children in any movement, here there is burning calories, which means you are making them more healthy. So try to think of any activity that will make you move or anything that will make you eat healthy. Strawberry, blueberry are very healthy. So you might put in your calendar tomorrow, I will eat five strawberries. Put it in a calendar. Later on, I will give you that exercise, which you can use it for this purpose. The next thing, which we came to understand more once we are together with the, this new uh, 2020, being family together again. Remember before, my father is long time away. My mother is working and my father is working and I'm all alone at home or maybe with my, my brothers and sisters or as parents, you don't have enough time for your kids. Now we are all together and we are obliged to help each other 
and to engage with each other, not by holding the gadgets the whole time, but by talking, by having conversation, maybe by playing Uno, or maybe by playing uh, Kerem, or maybe not Fortnite, of course, but games with the family together. And I think this is a golden opportunity for our social life to be better. Then we have passion. I'm sure many of you as parents realize new skills. As kids, you suddenly realize that you like to paint or you have a new hobby or you like to garden in your backyard. All these things, you wouldn't discover them before because we were living in a very fast life. But now we are realizing that, oh, I like photography or I like video editing. How many of you today have an account in YouTube and they know how to edit uh, video clips and upload and download? Because we had an opportunity now to be able to learn these new things and unpack new things. Then also we have decided and we have learned how to pause during this period and sometimes be calm and reflect and figure out, especially as a parent, you will you realize that suddenly you have found new things among your kids that you didn't know before because we were living in a rush of life. Just by observing them, just by looking at how they are solving issues as a child as a teenager i'm sure you have noticed that oh i didn't know that my mother or my father they like chocolate or they like this and that because we are taking things slowly and the last but not least point is all about you you have found out the new you by realizing i need to explore the world more i need to understand more i have an opportunity to ask questions to navigate and you are so blessed because including us and you, we have the internet, we have the digital world, which allows us to travel all the way. Victoria and Baghdad, they are in Norway, and we are in United Arab Emirates, and we are able to meet them and talk to them and have fun with them and enjoy with them. So this is the beauty of the virtual world, which will allow us to learn new things rather than just keep on engaging. You can have some time for playing, I'm not saying no, uh, but again, if you try to mix your time into different things that will really make the best out of it. I will end up, as I promised with you, with a small exercise that I want to share the screen with you and I, I will tell you how this game goes by. And it's fun for both parents and for kids, by the way. Can you see my screen? Yeah, now it's Say thumbs up if you see my screen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's showing, Doctor. Fine. Perfect. Now, look at what is written. The first circle on the left side, it's written health, correct? Write down the word health in front of you in a paper or on your iPad and make a big circle around it and then keep an empty space below the word health so that every day you sit with your parents and think of a healthy activity or a healthy habit that you want to do on that day and write it down. And once you are done with it, at the end of the day, put a tick mark next to it. For example, I will write below health, climbing the stairs five times. So I have stairs in my house. I will say I will climb the stairs five times today. I will write it down there. And I'll make sure before I sleep on that day, everyone at home has done that activity. Or I might write eating three blueberries tomorrow morning before noon. Any healthy habit that you come across or you have heard about, write it down there. If you are a parent and you are smoking, you will say, I will stop smoking three cigarettes tomorrow, and I will only smoke two cigarettes instead of five. So you can put small, small activities, and you can watch your parent and tell them, you did not follow this, you did not tick box to it. Keep adding as many activities as you want below this. When you go to around me, put the activities that will make you much closer to each other. I'll give a kiss on my father's forehead tomorrow morning, or I will call my aunt, or I will not say bad words to my brother for 24 hours. I know it's very difficult. You will end up saying something nasty after five minutes, but try to put it as a fun game and see how long can you hold it and then give yourself a point. When you go to pause, try to put things which is related about you not becoming angry. So if your brother snaps on you or if your child suddenly does something wrong, instead of shouting on them, keep quiet. Do not say anything for five seconds and try to teach yourself and your siblings that one. When it comes to passion, 
put a new learning. Tomorrow I will learn how to cook an egg. So you just put that one and try go and burn the kitchen. It's okay. Then your parents are gonna pay for it. Don't worry. So try new things as much as you can about your passion, or if you wanna write a blog, or if you wanna create a website. And as the last one, it's about you, how you give back to your society. Here, try to put things that you will volunteer back to the society. Oh, today I saw a poor animal, I will help the animal. Or I will donate a little bit of money to the poor people when I will go to the supermarket. Or I saw a poor man on the street, I will give him uh, my food because I am not wasting my food and I'm giving him food. So this is like a small fun game which will allow you to come up with new ideas every day because it's a never ending. And then you can mark how many points did you get at the end of the week and the winner of course gets an iPhone. No, I'm joking. The winner gets, uh, uh, he can go to his parent and tell him whatever they want or even the parents if they win and get more points then they can reward themselves with something. So this was a very quick tour that I took you through the world of positivity, of how to be have fun during COVID and not to be afraid of it. I'm a physician. I see patients every day with COVID. Nothing happens. We are all, because we are, don't forget wearing the mask all the time when you are leaving home, keeping the distance of the two meter, sanitizing your hand. That will make us a healthy society always. Do not forget these precautions. So now I will leave the floor to our amazing Bakhta, who will take us through a very interesting story of curiosity because she will tell us so many nice secrets that all of us would love to listen to her. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Mansour. Uh, I will also try to share my screen with you guys. Uh, and hopefully if, um, if you can see my slides now, Victoria, can you not? Yes, you see my slides. I am so excited to be here with all of you from Norway. It's so strange, right? That we are here in Scandinavia and you are far, far away from us, but now so close. And I'm, I really believe that the, in this social distance time, we need to create some sort of digital intimacy or a mental intimacy. That's what we're doing here. So I also want to talk about curiosity. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your uh, talk, uh, Dr. Mansour. It's, it was funny, it was inspiring. And I'm also all about curiosity because I really believe that the future belongs to the curious, to the ones who are not afraid to try it, to explore it, to poke at it, to question it, and to turn it upside down and inside out. And curiosity is the desire to learn. It is an eagerness, right, to explore, discover, and figure things out. And you kids are so much better at it than us adults. In fact, research shows that it is a child's internal desire to learn. The curiosity, not external pressure, that motivates them to seek out new experiences that is fundamental for your development and learning. So what happens to curiosity, to this superpower as we grow older? A famous philosopher and mountain climber in Norway, Arne Ness, were once asked by a journalist, why did you start climbing? And he answered the question by asking the journalist another question that was, why did you quit? Curiosity is a skill that can be labeled as superpower because it's fundamental in so many areas of our lives, in learning, development, leadership, innovation, and of course, also in connection with others. It is a skill that we are born with. However, it is a skill we should not take for granted because we can choose to actively approach life, tasks, opportunities, challenges, and other people. The people that we don't know and the people that we think we know everything about, like our parents, our brothers and sisters, our friends, all of them, we can choose to approach them with curiosity. And my personal journey into curiosity and connections started with a man. 
in all modesty, I have to tell you that I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world sometimes. Well, I'm married all the time, but sometimes he is really wonderful. The thing that connected the two of us from the very beginning were the great conversations. We could just talk for hours and hours. And through our conversations, I came to understand that this man was just about the wisest man on earth. And this is of course not the case now, but back then in those early years, he was just so interesting and interested because he asked questions and he listened and he asked more questions. And so did I. Fast forward a few years and we have two more children in addition to my two boys from a previous marriage. And I began to realize that once the kids, our kids had gone to bed, we were spending much of our time alone, exhausted on the couch, preferably in front of the TV and also maybe with our phones in our hands and suddenly sharing more on social media than with each other. And I really missed our conversations. I still had a lot that I wanted to talk with him about. I had a lot that I wanted to ask him and I had even more questions that I wish that he would ask me from time to time. It was, only, it, was not, it was not only our conversations I was missing. I was also really scared of losing us because I had gone through a divorce several years previously and, had, and I was terrified of once again finding myself in a situation where I would first lose communication, then connection. Because I had learned the hard way that when we stop asking, we stop sharing and then we stop caring. So I began to write down questions on small paper notes and collected them in an envelope. And that was questions about life, about us as individuals, as a couple, as a family. And this envelope with paper notes with question was quite full when I presented it to my husband one night. And over a cup of coffee, we started to randomly pick questions out of this envelope. And that night, seven years ago, or eight years ago maybe, was just magical for us. Because it felt like going back to the first years when we met and we were naturally curious at each other. We shared, we laughed for hours, and we didn't even pick that many questions. Because every question generated so much new conversation. So I said to my husband, I think this must be meaningful and fun and maybe even useful for all couples out there. And so began my journey to develop a tool to ignite curiosity, start conversations and fuel connections. And in November 2013, I launched what is now known as Fuelbox, the box of great conversations for couples. So what began with a feeling of disconnection has somehow become a tool for connection. And many different fuel boxes have been developed the last seven years and can now be found in thousands and thousands of homes and schools and workplaces all over the world. And these boxes, I have one with me here, they are filled with carefully created open-ended questions organized in relevant categories. Uh, and they all are supposed to bring us together face to face for sharing and learning and development. So my personal needs was somehow the starting point of my business business, but it seems like I was not alone in having these needs because what curiosity, asking questions and having these conversations really come down to is connection. All of us, all of the adults here, all of the kids here, everyone, all of us have a need to be seen. We have a need to be heard, to feel valued and have a sense of belonging in this world. That is fundamental for all of us. And I have learned the last years that our connections is the most important thing all of us really have. 
they are crucial to how we feel, how content and happy we are for our health, like Dr. Mansour also talked about, and for how we perform in school, at home, as parents, as siblings, and of course also in the workplace. A lot of studies show this, but I think all of us also really know this. And why do I believe that this is such an important topic here today? So this fantastic technology that we are surrounded by today has made the concept of distance very different. We are here together today, right? From Norway, from Dubai, from everywhere maybe. The world has become smaller and more accessible in so many wonderful ways. However, a question remains. Has the technology brought us closer to each other? Or has it perhaps brought us closer to everyone else except the people closest to us? Today we relax in front of different screens and we are social through me different medias. And these mobile devices that we are all more or less dependent on, myself included, they not only change what we do and how we do it, but they also change who we are. Because we are getting used to, and look at my slide now, we are getting used to being together without being together. Think about this. Today we hold these phones closer to us than we hold each other. And we ask far more questions of Google than we ask of each other. We might say that we are more disconnected in a world that has never been more connected. We are connected, but we are alone, even when we are together. And this COVID-19 pandemic has not changed this uh, for the better. Loneliness is still one of the world's greatest epidemics. And loneliness is really bad for us, for our physical health and for our mental health. And what about loneliness? Loneliness is not about being alone. You can feel really lonely together with a lot of people. You can feel alone in a classroom with all of your students, fellow students. You can feel alone in the office with all of your colleagues. You can even feel alone at home in your living room with all of your family present. Loneliness is about connection. It's about not feeling seen, understood, maybe valued, it's, not, it's, not, it's about feeling that I don't belong here, nobody understands me. Yesterday, I drove my 17 year old son to his friend's house. And when I offered to drive my kids, they know that there are no phones allowed in the car because that is mom time. Then they, are, they have to talk with me, they have to have a conversation with me. So just before we reached his friend's house, he picked up his phone and started texting. And I'm like, hey, what's happening? No phones in the car. And he's like, I'm just letting him know that I'm coming. And I'm like, okay, can't you ring the doorbell? And he looks at me like amazed. What, what, what is wrong with you, mom? Nobody ring the doorbell anymore. That is so 2018. And I'm like, what, why? Why won't you ring the doorbell? What is, what is wrong with you? And he said, I don't wanna risk having to have a random conversation with somebody in the house. I will phone my friend and he will open and let me, so I don't have to have a conversation that I'm not planned for or texted. Our kids, you kids, you grow up with these phones, with the tablets in your hands. And we see how it affects communication and interaction. So I really believe that we as parents need to make an active choice to expose you kids and ourselves to face-to-face -face communication. First of all, to connect with each other, but also to engage us, all of us, and especially you kids, in practicing curiosity. So we need to fuel your curiosity because you got it and we don't want you to lose it, right? We want to fuel your curiosity. You, we want you to be curious about yourself, who you really are, your potential, but also about life and possibility 
and not at least each other. Be curious at other people. We know from neuroscience that sharing with each other face to face, sharing your dreams, your aspirations, maybe even your fears or your stories, as well as maybe your knowledge, like uh, Dr. Mansour son did about the earth, that is what triumphs everything when it comes to connecting with each other. So sitting in front of each other and sharing with each other is the best thing you can do for your relationships. In all levels of Norwegian schools, they use our tailored fuel boxes uh, to engage students in reflection and conversation to develop strong connections with and between students, but also about, and this is all about creating a great learning environment. Uh, but also, they use Fuelbox to work with development of kids' emotional intelligence for their psychological well-being and health, and to have the student practice communication skills and curiosity. And I think we should do that right now. You've been, you've been listening now. You've been great at listening. We are going to challenge all of you with a question from our Fuelbox family. And I... I'm going to pick a question and I would love for any of you to write down your answer to this question in the chat, but you can also use a minute or two to talk with the person next to you. If you are having uh, your child or your parent next to you, you can actually answer this question with each other and have a small conversation. And of course you can bring this question with you to breakfast tomorrow or maybe even dinner and engage the whole family in answering this question. So, by the way, before you ask the questions, Bakhta, just to let everyone know, there is no right or wrong answer. Answer it the way you feel is the best. Agreed? Absolutely. And you write it on the chat box. Absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out, Dr. Mansour. So, all of the questions in these boxes are open ended. That means that you are the owner of the answer. And there's no right and wrong. That's so true. But what is interesting when we use this question is to exploring our own answers and each other's answers with even more questions. That is actually what a conversation is all about. So now we are, we, it's difficult to have conversation with hundreds of people at the same time. That would be a total chaos. So that is why I want you to enjoy this conversation maybe in your home now or tomorrow. But it would be fun to see if you could share your first thought in the chat. So, so I'm, you want to ask me, Bakhta, and I will answer you, and then you keep, they can answer. Yes, so when I pick the question now, you can start the thinking, maybe you start uh, talking about it, or you can listen to me and Dr. Manson talking about it, and share your thoughts in the chat. So here. Put your answers in yes. the chat. Don't copy no, no, my no. answer. So... <laughs> Have your original I think answer. this question is quite important to uh, reflect upon and talk about in the family these days with the pandemic and all. So what situations make you feel grateful even now in the midst of the pandemic? Dr. Mansour, what situation make you feel grateful these days? Thank you so much for this question. What makes me grateful is to see that I'm enjoying my time with my family and they are around me and they are in good health. Yeah. That makes me really feel grateful. And that's, I, I love that. And is, and is the situation maybe different now than before the pandemic in, in that regard? To be honest, before, the family was always there with me, but I did not feel their importance very much because I was so busy in my work and doing my stuff and taking things for granted, yeah. as they say. But now I realize that, oh my God, my kids are growing up very quickly and I still did not have chance to know more about them or to understand what they like and what they don't like. And I'm afraid when they will grow up, they will say, my dad, never knew what we liked and we didn't like. So I'm trying to catch up and find out what is their best food, what is their best sport, which t-shirts they yeah. like the most, and what makes them yeah. smile. 
So what is the biggest difference in your kids these days? What do you see? They are so pure. <laughs> they are so yeah. natural. And they are not judgmental. I like that about yeah. the kids. We make judgment about people around us and we believe on that judgment, but they will never judge. And the way I see it when two of my sons will fight with each other, after one minute, they will laugh with each other. If adults, we will fight, we will not talk to each other for 10 years. <laughs> so true. And then I realized, wow, they are so tolerant. They are able to forgive in a second. Why did we stop doing that as parents, as adults? Mm. That is actually one thing I'm really passionate about. I'm so passionate about us re, um, meeting peop, other people with curiosity, like exploring them, especially if we feel that someone has a totally different opinion than us. Like you spend some time exploring what's behind his or her perspective. And I think kids are maybe better at that. They are naturally curious. So, but uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mansour. I would really like, Victoria, do you, do you see some uh, answers in the chat? Because I can't see the chat right now. People are really active. It's so nice to see. So a lot of people are saying that they feel very grateful for staying home with their families. Irene is saying, staying with my family without gadgets, going out to beach, having fun with my siblings. Some are saying, seeing all the smiling faces of everyone around me really make me feel grateful. Spending time with my family. Some are saying that my family are healthy and happy. And one person is also saying, I'm grateful because even if there is COVID-19, my parents still have a job. We are still healthy, happy, and we can still live happily together. And I think that is really important because right now with COVID, like there's a lot of negativity around us in the news. And I think to really stop up and sometimes think about like, what are we grateful for right now? Is, is important because there's still a lot of things to be grateful for. Some are saying by eating and spending time with family, spending time with my kids. Uh, and I guess this situation actually makes us uh, use more time with our families, right? Mm -hmm. Because we need to be in smaller cohorts and, and stay more together at home. Um, yes, Thank you. Help stay with family. Yeah, so a lot of people are grateful for families. And I think this uh, pandemic, at least, were a reminder for us, as you also said, Dr. Mansour, how important, how grateful we should be for having a family. Maybe it's also a reminder of not everyone has a family. Some people actually live alone. Uh, and maybe that is something we need to think about. And, uh, and maybe some kids don't have friends. Uh, that is something we should uh, also take with us. They might feel even more isolated in this situation. Now we see how important that is for everyone. So um, thank you for sharing. I want to- By the way, I'll tell you one thing which I'm grateful for. I have more time now to read my favorite books. Yes. Which is fantastic. Me too, totally. I would like to share a story with you. Just one question, but there's a lot of question and we don't have time for all the questions, but maybe in the end today, we can pop maybe three questions that we can write down in the chat that we can encourage you to talk about um, for bedtime, maybe before you're going to bed after this session that you yeah. can discuss uh, with your parents uh, or tomorrow morning by the breakfast table. For sure. I have a, a few I want to share with you in the end. So, but if someone has a question, I think you also, Victoria, can answer it during my talk. So I, I just have a few things more that I would like to share with you. And one is the story when I actually launched Fuelbox Family. Then I was on the morning show on Norwegian television. And with me was a family of three kids and a mother and a father. And the mother shared on television that the night before, they had picked a question from Fuelbox Family that was, the question was, what is your best childhood memory? And when they picked that question, two of the kids were like, can I go first? Can I tell first? And then it, they learned that both kids wanted to talk about the same childhood memory. And they wanted to talk about the last Christmas they celebrated with 
their grandfather. In Norway, we celebrate Christmas every December. And the last Christmas they celebrated with their grandfather was one and a half year earlier because their grandfather had died in a hospital and the mother was devastated with grief and she did not put, want to put her grief on her kids. So she didn't talk about this with her kids. But kids are smart. They, of course, saw it. But they wouldn't say anything either because they didn't want to make their mother sad. So this question, what is your best childhood memory? You would imagine that children would share a soccer game they won or a cool vacation they went on. No, the kids use this question to talk about something they really needed to talk about in this family. So the mother said, we spent more than an hour sharing memories about our, my father, their grandfather. We laughed, we cried, and it was so important that we had that conversation. And that is something that I really love about this, using this with my family as well, because this open-ended question can help us talk about what we really need to talk about in a more playful, easy way, right? Another just short story. A few years ago, I gave a keynote at a leadership conference here in Norway. And after my keynote, um, a leader approached me and asked me, are you the founder of this box? And I said, yes. And he said, I just have to share with you. My son is 14 years old and he has had, been having trouble uh, at school and at home. He's been very sad and alone. So me and my wife decided we wanted to take him camping for two weeks to connect with him and to show him that life is more than what's happening in our village, right? So they took him camping and the therapist that they used gave them a fuel box family for, so they could borrow for the trip. And one night he shared with me, we picked the question, who was your hero when you were younger and who are your role models today? And when they asked this question, the son of 14 years old, he started to cry, just started to cry. And the parents were like, oi, what happened here? What, what, was, what is this all about? And when he could like find himself able to talk between his tears, he said, you know that my hero has always been you and you are still my role model today. And his father said, but why are you crying? And he said, because if I did not pick this question, I never think I would have told you. And I, this father stood in front of me with all these leaders, grown men and women around us, and he was crying and I was crying. And that is another thing. When we create an arena, a room, and have this curiosity with us, it enables us to maybe share something that we would love to share, but we find it very difficult, or we don't find time for it, or we forget it. We can share how we really appreciate one another. So what I have learned the last seven years is that asking questions, sharing our stories with another, create intimacy, recognition, respect, and understanding, and trust, and belonging, and yes, even love, the most important world, word in the world. But it can, for sure, feel both very vulnerable and take a lot of courage to look someone in the eyes and ask them these kind of open-ended, deeper question, right? And it might also take some courage to put a box on the table and pick a random question because you never know what you will get and you never know what kind of answer you will get. And I actually experienced this because we use fuel box with our kids. And one time at the cabin, we picked this question out of this box. Who could play the leading actors in the movie about our life? And I'm thinking, what can go wrong here? Well, a lot because my, ha my husband, he was really happy when the kids said that they thought that James Bond or Pierce Brosnan should play my husband, Thomas. And if you're not sure, my husband is to the left, right? So they look alike. He was really, really happy. My, I, on the other hand, I was not that satisfied with my kid's answer because they thought that this guy should play my role, Sid from Ice Age. And 
it was not only because we look alike, which of course I see that we do, but we also have the same personality according to my kids. So it takes a lot of courage to ask questions and it takes a lot of courage to take all the answers that you get uh, from asking these questions. So I would like to end this with some practical tips on how you can have this conversation in your home with your kids, with your parents, right? So what can you do? Well, one thing that I find is really, really important is to create an arena, something to gather around, maybe put some good food or snacks on the table and like make it a great environment for conversation. Invite everyone for this, create an arena. That is really important. And maybe put the favorite food for the kids on the table. That is a good idea. Another thing is make conversation and practicing curiosity fun and playful. I have a tip for you. In my family, we have done this. Everyone could in your family write down a question. It could be a question about something you're really curious about your parents or any question in the world. Every person in the family who can write should write down a question and put every question in a bowl and shake it a bit and then pick the question and then answer for each other, okay? Another one is that you could actually say is, okay, let's do who is the most or who is the least. And that could be a great start for a conversation in a family. So maybe some, you could do something like, who is the most, who's the messiest person in our household? And everyone gets to answer. And then you have a conversation because the one who everyone thinks is the most messy should be able to defend him or herself, right? Or who laughs the most in our family? Or who is strongest in our family? Or who deserves a big thank you in our family? And then everyone can share their answer and you can have a conversation upon the answers afterwards. Another thing you can also do is you as a mother and a father or you as a, a, a kid in the family could write down one question for everyone and put the question on paper notes under the plates in your uh, house when you're eating dinner. And then you let them know, well, now there's a question under each plate. Please look at it. And now everyone can change they can give their question to another person and get their question and you don't know what you get but you're giving your question to another person because you really want to know what him or she is thinking about this so did you get that not if you did yes okay so put question under a plate exchange question and then start sharing so another important tip always when you have conversation that is the most important question of all is always the follow-up question. Because a follow-up question is being curious. A follow-up question is when you explore the answers with more questions. And that is when the magic happens. So always use the follow-up questions. And least but not least, of course, a great tip from our side is to buy a fuel box so we don't have to come up with all the questions. So you could buy a fuel box for you and your family. And uh, I would like to give you actually, together with uh, Dr. Manzor uh, here today, we would like to give you a discount uh, if you want to buy a fuel box, a fuel box couples, fuel box friends, fuel box family, for your family. And then you use the coupon happiness coin on our website, fuelboxworld.com. So, Maybe take a picture or write down happiness coin on Fuelbox World and you will get a discount on all of our boxes. Okay, so now I'm going to leave you with a scientific proof tip. And this I hope you like, Dr. Manzor. You, you like science, right? I am going to leave you with a scientific proof tip. So if you don't remember anything I've said this last 20 minutes, this is really important to remember because science show that there are three words all of us should use more. Three words that will make us fantastic conversation partners with all of our friends, with our families, with our partners, with our colleagues, and 
these three words will fuel all of our connections or relationships. Only three words that all of us should use more. And you can see Dr. Mark Holder's TED Talk for all of the science behind these tips. So get ready to see what are the three words that will change your life. Tell me more. Okay, so these words, with these words, you show really interest in another person. You show interest in what they're saying, which also actually reflects that you are interesting to me. And that reflects back to you and a connection is strengthened, right? So show interest, explore answers with just saying, wow, that is interesting. Tell me more. It's really easy, but maybe it's quite difficult as well in our busy, busy, busy lives. So thank you for listening to me. And uh, now we will take some questions. I think we have time for it. Is, yes. So if anyone has questions, I will stop sharing my screen uh, and we'll take some, okay? Martha, maybe you can explain what a follow-up question is. Yes, so a follow-up question, yeah. So a follow-up question could be, uh, tell me more. That is a follow-up question. Or could you explain more uh, of this to me? Or could you tell me what happened next? And what do you think about this now? Uh, and uh, uh, what do you, uh, yeah, like exploring what they're saying to you. Can you tell me this, uh, can you tell me more? That is the best and the easiest one to use. And for example, uh, Dr. Mansour, I have a few questions from the family box that I could just pick, and then you could like maybe answer one of them, and uh, I'll, I'll read five, and you can choose one, and then we'll try to ask you a follow-up question. Maybe that would be useful. Yes. Yeah? Sure, go ahead. So, uh, what achievements at school or work have, you, have made you proud? Who in your family deserves a big thank you? Sorry, I'm reading from here. <laughs> let me see. Uh, what could have been the, let me see. What could have been the title of the movie about your life? And <laughs> in what ways do you think we are similar and different from each other in our family? Well, we're not family, but we're almost family now, I feel. Uh, and who inspires you? So that a question from Fuelbox family. And if you were to answer maybe who in your family, Dr. Mansour, deserves a big thank you, who would you say? Okay, this is an amazing question. Of course, me, uh, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I want to say who is the biggest member in my family who deserves a thank you, mm -hmm. it will be my youngest daughter, Noor because she is teaching us tolerance, she is teaching us curiosity, she is teaching us patience, she is teaching us uh, to not to react very quickly. So she is spreading that curiosity. Yes, she's two and a half years old, she's running around, she's shouting around, she's having fun, she's breaking stuff. And rather than being mad on her, I'm just enjoying her breaking things because then I see her mom getting mad on her. So that's fun. So who do you think is her role model in the family? That was a follow-up question. Yeah, that was a follow-up. So this is a follow-up question for everyone else. So, because we are still discussing, because if you ask only one question and you stop, this is not curiosity. Curiosity comes with your second question. So if I will say who inspired her, it's her mom. It's her mom. In what way do you see that she is inspired by your wife? Okay, I think the way I can see her inspired is by uh, making the same things that she does. Because what I have found out as kids, we copy paste our mom and dad like anything mm -hmm. without realizing we will end up doing the same thing my mom and dad is doing and we will do the same way. So she will always look at her mom, what she's doing, if she's reading or she's talking on the phone or she's uh, uh, walking, and then she will do the same. Yeah, that is such a reminder because I always say that kids, or at least my kids, they do not do as I say, they do as I do, right? So exactly. uh, 
role modeling is so important, right? Well, thank you, Dr. Mansour. Do we You're have any questions from a participant, Victoria? Not yet. People are thanking for the session. And I guess a lot of people are saying that they will use Tell Me More now with yes. students and they will also use it within their families. Love that. I saw someone writing, hey, I have a question. Uh, hey, I have a question. Yeah, but there's no question. So, Bushra, <laughs> please write your question and we will try to answer. <laughs> and if you have any question for us in Fuelbox, you can go through fuelboxworld.com and write us anything and we will answer. There's a, uh, you can get in contact with us there. Uh, and now there's a question. I want, so one question is, I want to ask how I can improve relations with my family. Yes. So uh, probably Dr. Mansour can answer as well. But for me, I think what we know from science or what I know from experience is that being curious about each other is the most important thing we can be in our relationship being interested, asking questions, showing that you care about the other person, you value their opinion, you care about what they're spending their time on, you care about what is important to them. I think that is a, a one message for me at least, like connect through communication, ask questions, uh, create conversations. I think that is one important. And also, of course, having experiences together, uh, and, and now if we have to stay in our homes, at least we do in Norway, I know that you are uh, able to go more outside uh, in Dubai now, but uh, when we stay at home, create like these small moments of fun uh, um, experiences as a family. So, but for me, curiosity is fundamental, being curious at each other, showing you care. Yeah. Dr. Mansour, do you have? I can give a quick tip for this question. Uh, create a gadget-free day where none of the devices will be allowed to be used on that specific day. Use it as a trial. And the other thing you do on that day, never ask a question which comes with an answer of yes or no. Thank you. Evaluate that day and see how does it go. Because when we are judgmental, this is what makes us very difficult. Did you eat your food? No. Did you swim? No. Did you take a bath? Yes. Why didn't you do your homework? So also do not use any question with why. This is very, very, very important. Stop using any question with the word why for one day and you will see wonderful things happening. Thank you for that. And I really believe that communication is a skill that we can practice and we'll get better at it. And doing what you're suggesting here, Dr. Mansour, will give you practice and will probably also make you conscious about how difficult it is to ask open-ended questions. We tend to ask these yes or no questions all day long. So I love that suggestion, like try it out, practice it, and maybe we'll have totally new uh, conversations with your family, with the people that you know everything about. Well, at least think we know everything about, right? And I, and I also want to say, I think it's also important if there is some challenges, with having conversation, it's also very important to try, as Bertha said, to create an arena for it. Because sometimes it's hard when people are rushing around and very busy to ask a hard question. Sometimes it's better to sit down, create a nice atmosphere, maybe have some good food. People are a bit relaxed and calm and then ask some questions because that will maybe create a better situations for a dialogue as well. Thank you so much. And now I think you can tell the next session we are going to have, Victoria, when is that and for whom is it? So we can, now it's well, eight o'clock. Yes. So today there was a lot of children here and maybe even more kids than we thought. We thought maybe there would be more parents. So when I see all these kids, I'm thinking maybe we one time we need to create one session only for kids. I think that would also be amazing just for kids so that's that's on our to-do list but for next uh, in in two weeks time i guess iman she has the the right date but we will set up a session only for teachers soon because i see that there are some teachers who are writing as well uh, 
and there will be a session for how to use curiosity and fuel box in schools. So that will be for people working within the school. And Imam, when is that session? When is that session? And will you send the invitation? Yes, for the next week, it will be on the 4th of November at the same timing. And, uh, you, and for the other session for the school, it will be by the 26th of November. Yes. So on 4th of uh, November at 8 p.m., there will be a session with the title How Strong Connections Can Create a Healthy School. Uh, and then Dr. Mansour, we are so happy he will join us again. Uh, and then we will also have Anna Sophia. She works in Fuelbox with us and she is head of school and education in Fuelbox. So she only works with teachers and schools and, and youth and, and students. And she is also a teacher. So I think that would be a really great ses session. Okay. So thank you so much from Norway. It was a, totally a pleasure seeing all of you and I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for all your nice uh, words in the chat. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mansour and Imam. And, and also if, if you have some questions in regards to to Fuelbox, today we use Fuelbox family, but there's also Fuelbox for kids and for youth, uh, and of course for couples. But then you can talk to, either you can write us, we sent the, the address here, or you can also contact Dr. Mansour directly. Uh, I know a lot of you know Dr. Mansour from before, and he he's used Fuelbox on many occasions. So please contact him as well if you need to know more about it. Okay. So thank you everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Love from Norway. Thank you. Thank you. It was a very wonderful session today that uh, I was very grateful for this opportunity to have you and get people to uh, get closer to fuel box and get to know and explore what these tiny boxes uh, uh, include in it and uh, how magical it can be in between different settings as uh, schools, students, friends, families, uh, teachers. Uh, thank you once again and looking forward for the next week's session. For those who are interested to know more about the session, please follow us on our Instagram account. It's Sharja underscore health. You may uh, see all the ads on, my, on our account or either um, you might uh, put on your uh, email address in the chat and we can email you with the link and invitation for the next week's session and maybe for the later on on 26th of November. So see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.